Welcome to section 19.3b. All right, gentle people, in this lecture, we're going to talk about how to name coordination compounds. So we're going to start with a compound that we were discussing during our last lecture. So to name these compounds, you're going to follow the same rules that you've seen previously before. So if you have an ionic compound, what you want to do is name the cation before the anion. For example, if you had sodium chloride, you would name this sodium and then chloride. So in a coordination compound, what you guys are going to do is you're going to name whatever is the cation first and then the anion. So in this case, I still have a chloride, so the end name is going to be chloride. The cation in this case was my complex ion. Now what's going to be new in this section is how to name the complex ion itself. What you guys are going to do first is you're first going to list the ligands and then followed by the metal ion. Now, remember, if the metal is in the cation, simply use the metal ion's name. That means use the metal's name followed by the oxidation state in Roman numerals. In this case, we have cobalt. It is in the 3 plus oxidation state. So I'm going to write cobalt and 3 in parentheses in Roman numerals. Now before the metal, you are going to list all the ligands. If the ligand is neutral, simply use the name of that neutral ligand. Now there are a few exceptions to this, and we'll go over that in the next slide. If the ligand is something that is charged, you are going to go ahead and drop the suffix and put an O at the end. To delve into this further, here's a list of some example ligand names. Here is a neutral ligand, methylamine, and what you will see is if you were to name a complex ion, you would just use the name methylamine. Now there are certain neutral ligands that get special names. In the box, what you guys will see are those special names. So if water is your ligand, you guys are going to name it aqua. As you saw in the previous slide, ammonia is amine, and you guys can see the rest of the list here. Your book goes over a couple more. You guys should know those couple more. Now, if you have a charged ligand, remember to drop its suffix and add an O. So instead of fluoride, you have fluoro. If instead of bromide, you have bromo. And then at the end, you can see instead of cyanide, you have cyano. Now, after you name the ligand, you got to tell me how many ligands are attached to that complex ion. So you are going to designate a prefix for the amount of ligands that are attached. So you guys are going to go back to your Greek prefixes. What you will see in this complex that we were discussing is there are six ammonias. So six has the prefix hexa. Now, there are some special cases. For example, we discussed the bidentate ligand ethylene diamine during our last lecture. What you guys will notice is that built in to ethylene diamine's name is a di. Now this can get confusing if we use our traditional prefixes. We don't want to say diethylene diamine because that can lead to some confusion. Instead, there is a second set of prefixes. These prefixes are used for ligands with complicated names that have di, tri, tetra, penta, hexa already incorporated in their name. So instead of using di, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say bis. So if my complex ion has two ethylene diamines, I would say bis ethylene diamine. And so you can see if I have three complicated ligands, I would use tris and then four complicated ligands, tetrakis. Now let's say you have more than one ligand type. In this case, I have bromo ligands and I have amine ligands. So what you guys are going to do is you're going to list the ligands in alphabetical order. You're not going to count the prefix. So in this case, amine starts with an A, bromo starts with a B, so you put A before B. And then you guys can designate how many ligands you have by putting the appropriate prefix on there. Now let's say that your complex ion was the anion. So again, you're going to follow that same rule for ion compounds. You're going to name first the cation and then your anion. 
Now, if the complex ion is the anion, what you got to do is you got to change how the metal is named. When it is an anion, what you're going to do is you're going to add ATE at the end of the metal's name. Now, if it has a prefix of IUM, then you're going to drop the IUM and put ATE. For example, platinum is going to become platinate. Now, there are some exceptions to this where some of these metal ions will revert back to their Latin names. Now, I'm not going to make you guys memorize their Latin names, but you guys can use the table and I will provide you guys with this list if I want you to name one of these complexes. Other than that, the anion follows the same rules when it comes to naming ligands. So let's go ahead and tackle our next quiz. Tell me how many of these are named correctly. Assume the molecular formula is what I'm trying to name and tell me if I name these correct or not. Go further and tell me what the mistake was in each one of these complexes. All right, what you guys should have noted was that three of them were named incorrectly. Let's take a look at the first one. The first one, what you have is a cation. And the cation does not make the metal get the suffix ATE. So we want to cross that out and that would have been the proper name. Remember, it is only when the complex ion is an anion, a negatively charged species, does it get that ATE suffix. In the next compound, there were a couple of mistakes. The first mistake is you will note that there are four amines. And so that is not the designation penta. It should have been tetra. The other thing that is a mistake in this naming is that you notice that the alphabetical order is off. The amine ligand starts with AM, the water ligand starts with AQ, AM should come before the AQ. So this should have been written as tetramine diaqua nickel 2 ion. In the next compound, what you'll notice is there's a di in front of the potassium. Remember, when you name ionic compounds, you never put di tri in front of each one of the ions. So the dye is unnecessary. Next, you'll note that the platinate has the wrong oxidation state. If we look at the complex ion, the complex ion should be charged as a negative two anion. Now remember, chlorine is a charge of negative one, and there are six of them. So to make this work, this should have been platinum four plus. And so in that case, this Roman numeral should have been four. All right, the last complex on here is written correctly. I should have stated this before, but EN is a very common abbreviation for ethylene diamine. And so this is the only one that is written correctly. Why don't you guys go ahead and take some time and practice writing this in the other direction? What if I give you a name? Could you write the molecular formula if I give you the compound's name? So here's what you hopefully should have gotten. And with that, I hope this lecture made sense. And remember Chem1C to stay safe.